Hello, in this chapter, we're going to look at bond valuation and also to begin our discussion, discussion on what determines the level of interest rate for a particular security. Before we get into bond valuation, I want to first start with a general valuation principle. This principle applies to all investments. So whether or not the investment be bond, stocks, real estate, a new restaurant, a new building, um, a new piece of machinery, the same principle applies. And that principle is that the value of an investment is equal to the present value of expected future cash flows. So in other words, in order to determine the value of an investment, we need to know three things. We, know, we need to know the future cash flows. And for that, we need to know both the size and timing. So how much am I getting and when am I going to get it? Those are the first question you need to ask when someone offers you an investment opportunity. What am I getting back? So how much and when? Be very specific about when because they can give you a promise of a high return, but if that takes 30, 50 years, that's not as relevant. The other important thing is when we compute present value, in addition to the timing and size of cash flow, we also need to know the discount rate. And a very important factor that drives the discount rate is the risk of the investment. So ask those three questions. How much am I getting? When? And what is the risk involved? With those three pieces of information, you can determine the value of any investments. So now let's take a look at a specific example. Let's take a look at a bond. So to value a bond, we need to know the cash flow associated with the bond. And for bond, there are two types of cash flow. One is called phase value or par value. So this is a new terminology. The phase value or par value of a bond is the amount that will return to investor at the time of maturity. So on maturity date, you'll get your phase value back. The second component of cash flow when you invest in a bond is the interest payment, but we call that interest payment coupon. I'll explain in a minute why we uh, want to make that dis distinction. So the coupon is the amount of payment that you receive on specific dates. So this, um, and this occur on a recurring basis. So as you can see, when you invest in a bond, there are two types of cash flow. The first is the first is the face value or par value. You receive that on your maturity date. So the easiest way to remember that is that it's at the end of the bond. So that is your future value. That's the value at the end of the investment. Um, the coupon payment is a recurring payment of the same amount. So the coupon payment actually is a, is a type of annuity. So if you're using your calculator, you can enter that as um, the annuity payment. So as you can see, once you know the timing and the value of the cash, uh, the timing and the size of the cash flow, the only thing remaining that we need to determine is the discount rate. So what should the discount rate be? And this is where I want to explain the differences among different types of interest rates associated with a bond. So the first rate that you will, uh, when you read a bond quotation, you will see something called a coupon rate. The coupon rate is not the discount rate. The coupon rate is only used for computing coupon payments. So when, <clears throat> once you know the face value, you can figure out what the coupon payment is based on the coupon rate. Here is some examples of real bond quotations from a brokerage firm. So how to read this is you look at the top over here. There's some very important information. Uh, one is the maturity and coupon associated with the bond. So this is what we talk about. So for this bond, it has a maturity in the year 2023 and a coupon rate of 4%. Uh, something that we'll introduce a little bit later is bond ratings. So bond ratings can go from triple A to triple B uh, to single B. So this is a B rated bond, which means that it's not very good, uh, meaning that it is uh, relatively high risk. And not surprisingly, the coupon rate is relatively high. Let's take a comparison to a bond that is of higher quality. 
Um, he is a bond that also matures in year 2025. So it's not whole, or 2022 as a whole, that's not a whole lot different, but because it has a higher rating, uh, double A, it has a much lower coupon of 2%. So coupon is important um, and also because it tells you how much money you're getting um, and also quality of the bond is important as well. Now let's take a closer look at what other information we can find out about a particular bond. So notice that it has a, the QCIP, this is like an identification number. Um, this is used by the brokerage firm. Uh, it tells you that this is a corporate bond and the company that issues it is called News American Inc. Uh, the maturity day is October 1st, 2023. What that means is you'll get your par value back of 1,000 uh, and the redemption price is 100, is 100 so it's 100%. Um, most bonds are denominated in $1,000. So uh, and it carries a coupon rate of 4%. And this, the payment frequency is very important. We learned that in this case, this is a semi-annual bond, which means that you'll get paid twice per year. So it also tells you when the next coupon payment is. So this bond will pay every six months. So in, on April 1st and on October 1st. So every year in April and October, you'll get your coupon payment. And then um, in the year 2023, you'll get your original um, face value back. So these are the basic uh, cash flows associated with a bond. So just a reminder, I wrap up that coupon rate is used for computing coupon payment. Now, when we want to compute the present value of, a, uh, of the future cash flow for a bond, we need a discount rate. The discount rate we use is called the U to maturity. The U to maturity is the market interest rate. And so this is because it's the market rate, this change over time. Uh, most of the time, the huge maturity can be, can be used to compute the bond prices or it can be inferred from current market price. The way that it typically works in, in practice is that a company who is um, interested in issuing a bond, they will look at the current market price of bonds with similar quality particularly in bond rating. So a AAA bond or a AAA company will look at the price of other AAA bond. And then based on that, they can determine the yield maturity for bonds that are offering, the uh, bonds that are AAA. And then they will use that yield maturity to determine the price of the bond for the existing company. So investors can do the same thing. Investor can look at the, um, the price from other bonds with similar rating and then, de and then use that U to maturity, use their U to maturity to estimate the value of the bond that they're analyzing. There's one last um, statistics that is oftentimes reported in bond quotation and that is called a current yield. Um, the current yield is not used in any calculation um, except as a measure of return. So notice that the current yield is based on the annual coupon payment. So regardless of the payment frequency, you'll use the annual coupon payment and it's based on the price of the bond. So remember that the coupon payment is the recurring component. So the current yield is a measure of an income yield. So whenever we are looking at an investment, um, one of the important um, return characteristics that we look at is the recurring income income component versus the capital gains yields component. So we will, uh, we will want to look at the income yield component of stocks, bonds, a rental property. So if you think about a prop, a real estate property, you can get rental income that's recurring. And when you eventually sell the property, you'll get a one time um, capital gain. So we want to distinguish between the two. So current yield is useful when we are comparing different investment and we are, we are concerned about the income component versus the capital gains yield component. Uh, for those of you who are accounting students, this is particularly important because as you know, income is taxed at a different tax rate than capital gain. Okay, now let's take a look at an example. Um, on how do we compute bond valuation. 
So uh, here's a summary, and this is probably something that is useful for you to write down on your, um, in your notebook, um, on your pharma sheet. So pause the video now and take a minute to write this down. So remember that the coupon component, the coupon payment, is a cash flow. So the coupon payment is the annuity cash flow that you receive from buying the bond. The par value is the money that you receive in at the end of the investment. So this is the future value. The time to maturity is the, uh, depending on the bond. The discount rate we use is always the yield to maturity. And then also the price of the bond is the value of the bond and the price of the bond is the present value. So this is useful information to have handy as we go through our next example.